Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, create binary tree from descriptions. After yesterday's problem, this one should actually be a little bit therapeutic. So I'm just gonna jump right into the example. So the idea is that we're given this list of triplets. The first value in each triplet is gonna represent the parent node. So I'm gonna put a little P over here. The second value is gonna represent the child. So that's over here. Now it could be a left child or it could be a right child. The way we'll know is actually from the third value in the triplet. If it's a one, it's the left child. If it were a zero, so let's look at this node over here. I mean, that, that's actually the same one. So uh, 20 is the parent over here. 17 is the child and it happens to be the right child. So it's over here. Now, of course, this only works if we don't have duplicates in the input. By duplicates, I mean the values of each node. So the values are gonna be unique. All we wanna do is given these triplets, construct the binary tree and then return the root of the binary tree. So that's kind of a challenge in and of itself, right? How do you know what is the root of the tree? Well, conceptually, it's not super crazy. Each one of these is sort of acting as an edge in the graph. Notice how we have a three plus two plus one, so that's six nodes, right? Notice how many edges we have. One, two, three, four, five. That's always gonna be the case because as you know, trees don't have cycles. So there's always gonna be one less edge than there are nodes. Every edge kind of implies that a particular node happens to be a child. This edge implies that this node is a child. This edge implies this one is a child. This one says this is a child and I'm just gonna keep going. 80 is a child and looks like 19 is also a child. So all but one are children. So that's of course gonna be the root node. So this part isn't like super crazy to figure out, I think. So I just wanted to start with it. So we'll have some kind of mechanism to know. So pretty much we can kind of just keep track of what all the children happen to be. Like, I guess like the technique I'm using to find the root, I guess is basically taking this problem and kind of inverting the problem. Instead of looking for the root, look for all the children and then the negation or the opposite of that is going to be the root. So that's how we're finding the root in this problem, just invert the problem. I think I made a post about this today and you know it literally shows up everywhere. Anyways, now for the actual problem, how do you reconstruct a graph like this? Well, the easiest way is just like we would if we were doing some kind of adjacency list, right? If you know how adjacency lists work, you just build the graph, right? You'd like create the edge. This time it's a little bit unique because it's a tree, but it's not gonna be that bad. Like we do have to create the nodes as well. So we'll kind of do that. Let's just try to like dry run through this on pen and paper, and then the solution should become pretty clear. So idea is we get here. We see there's 20. So better create a node for 20 at the very least, and better create a node for the child at the very least as well, and better take the parent and set its left child to 15. That much is straightforward, isn't it? But now we run into the second edge. What am I gonna do, create another node for 20? No, I'd rather not do that. So let's keep track of all the nodes somewhere so that we can do a very fast lookup. Do we already have a node with the value 20? Yes, we do. How would I know that though? Probably using some kind of hash data structure. That's the most efficient way to do the lookup. Should I use a hash set? That would tell us if the node exists or not, but that's not good enough in this case, right? This is such a good example because it shows us exactly how to solve the problem. Just knowing whether that node exists isn't good enough because look what we wanna do right now. We want to say, okay, 20 already exists, don't recreate it, but it's child 17, it doesn't exist. And it happens to be a right child. So what do you wanna do? We wanna connect this node now with the right child. Suppose we're looping over these descriptions. We still need a reference to that node that already exists. Sure, we can create a node for 17, but we want to refetch that node 20 that we created previously. So of course I would rather use a hash map because then we know the node exists and we can get a reference to that node. So pretty much as we create the nodes, add them to a hash map, just like you kind of do with an adjacency list, I would Use like an array if we could, but the nodes aren't numbered in that way. So we are kind of forced into using a hash map. So that's what I'm gonna do. So, you know, just take those, add them to the hash map. And I won't really draw that out because I don't think it visually would make a lot of sense. Just kind of assume everything that's blue has been added to the hash map. So now we're gonna continue going. Now we're at this node, it's 50. 
It doesn't exist, so we create it. 20 already exists, we don't create it. Now it's one, so we connect it via the left pointer. Now just a couple nodes left, this one, 50, um, already exists, 80, uh, doesn't exist, create it. Looks like it's the right child, connect it via the right pointer. And lastly, over here, 80 already exists, 19 doesn't create it, connect it via the left pointer. Now we could do the next part in a separate loop or you could do it at the same time as we did it in the first loop. This is what I would do. I'm going to take every single node that we iterate over, well, almost every single node, I'm gonna have a hash set for children. I'm gonna take every value that showed up in the second position in each triplet and I'm gonna add them to the hash set. So we'd end up with 15, 17, 20, 80, and I think that was 19 down there. So these are all the children. Now we can iterate over every node in the input and notice that if there is a node that is the root, it's of course always gonna show up at some point in the parent position, isn't it? Well, now you might think of the counter example. What if we just had a single node? And you're right, if we just had a single node, then we probably wouldn't have anything in the descriptions because every edge kind of implies that there are two nodes at the minimum, right? So in this problem though, the good thing is that they guarantee there's gonna be at least one edge, therefore there's gonna be at least two nodes, therefore at least one of these nodes is going to be a parent node, and we know that the root node is definitely gonna be a parent node, it's gonna have at least one child. So what I'm getting at is that we know one of these nodes that I've circled in orange is going to be the root. So we iterate over every single one, check, is it a child? 20 is a child, uh, 50 is a child, or actually no, 50 is the one that's not the child, that's the root. So then we'd know that this is the root and then we would return that node. We can do all of this in linear time where n is the number of descriptions. And of course we have the hash map and hash set, so that's gonna be constant or, or linear space as well. So as I mentioned, we are going to go through the input descriptions. We're gonna have the parent, the child, and is it a left child? So I guess I'll try to be descriptive here. And we're doing unpacking, by the way, that's how I'm doing this in Python. I'm making a course explaining all of this. And I already have like a beginner Python course for this stuff. We're gonna say, first of all, the mapping, right? That's the big part. We have a hash map up above, which are gonna be the nodes. This way we'll know, this way we'll know if a node already exists or not. So I'm gonna first start with this. If parent is not in nodes, then create a node for the parent. I'm gonna create a tree node. I'm gonna give the value of parent and I'm gonna add this to the map using parent, the value of the node as the key. Now, after this, you might say, well, let's also create the child. If child is not in nodes, let's do the same. Nodes of child is gonna be equal to a new tree node now with the child value. Next, we want to add a left or right child to this. We want to add that edge. We want to connect these two nodes. So we can do that like this. If is left, then we'll get that node that we just created up above via the hash map, node.parent. The left child will be set to nodes of child. We don't necessarily know. Maybe this node already existed. Maybe this node already existed. We don't care if these if statements executed or not, because notice we're getting the node from the map. That's why we don't have a separate variable here or here for the node. So here uh, we have that. Otherwise, gonna be very similar. Just take this and then do the right child. Now, one thing I didn't really go over because we could have a separate loop for it down here. We wanna keep track of all the children, remember, but why have a separate loop for that? We already looped over the description, so let's just do that up here. Let's add this, children is gonna be hash set, and then down here, every single time to that hash set, I'm going to add the child, and then down here, we wanna know what we end up returning. So now I'm gonna use shorthand PCL in descriptions. I'm sure you know what they stand for, parent, child, and is left, but we only care about the parent pointer or the parent value. So if P is the single node that is not a child, if P is not in children hash set, return it, but not the value, the node. Thankfully, we have that hash map up above. Nodes of P is gonna be the node. Let's go ahead and now run this. As you can see, it works and it's pretty efficient. I guess it's time for me to get back to working on that Python for Coding Interviews course which is gonna be on neatcode.io in a couple days pretty soon. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.